there is something that's just happened that will have an effect on consumer spending. The Supreme Court out with the ruling on President Biden's student debt cancellation plans. Our Alexis Keenan has been reading through the decision, and it seems as though this is a defeat for the president and that plan. Yeah, Julie, definitely a defeat here. There were two cases that the Supreme Court was looking at, so kind of two chances to challenge this particular plan for debt forgiveness for student loan borrowers. Uh, One was brought by six Republican-led states. The other was brought by two borrowers. Now, the court did away with the one by the two borrowers, saying that they don't have standing to sue. But the one they're making this decision on is the Republican states who challenged the law. And they said Missouri, which has a significant uh, student loan servicer that stands to benefit from student loans continuing to be paid out over time. They're the ones who have the hook here and were able to keep this case in court. Now, the question was, can the Biden administration unilaterally, or really any administration, forgive this federal student loan debt under the HEROES Act based on an emergency, national emergency, in this case, COVID-19 being the national emergency there? And the, the question was, could they do that without approval from Congress? And this court here saying no in a 6-3 decision with Justices Kagan, Sotomayor, and Jackson dissenting, uh, Chief Justice John Roberts writing uh, that, no, this forgiveness plan is not legal. It cannot stand under the HEROES Act uh, and that the administration is not authorized to offer this kind of debt forgiveness. Now, I am still reading through uh, the decision here and there'll be more to come. But basically what this does is it makes that plan that was to forgive up to $20,000 in federal student loan debt for borrowers whose modified ju- uh, gross, adjusted gross income was under $125,000 or households up to $250,000. They were going to be able to get up to $20,000 of student do- loan debt wiped out or possibly uh, maybe just up to $10,000, depending on whether those borrowers had a Pell Grant that they had received during the course of their borrowing. Now, this impacts largely a much bigger group, 43 million borrowers, student loan borrowers in the U.S. The administration had predicted that 20 million of those borrowers could have seen some forgiveness under this plan. But also, you have to look at taxpayers. Uh, before the call, uh, the court had halted uh, this uh, this um, plan from going forward, uh, you had 26 million already applied. Um, but as for the taxpayers, the cost of this plan, uh, it varied widely, so it's kind of hard to get your arms around it. On one hand, you had the CBO saying that it would cost $400 billion over 30 years. You also had the University of Pennsylvania estimating that it would be 300 to up to $980 billion over 10 years. So certainly taxpayers uh, stand to be impacted greatly here as well. Uh, but these payments now for student loans, they've been on pause since early in the pandemic. Uh, so things are going to change here for the country's millions and millions of borrowers who were looking for that relief, guys. Just looking through the filing as well, Alexis, as as you've been combing through as well, it seems like the dissent uh, led by Justice Elena Kagan, that's saying that it essentially, as of right now, from the first page to the last, the opinion departs from the demands, uh, the demands rather, of judicial restraint. Just help us break down exactly, perhaps, what that means as the the dissent is making their case as well as this has been a, a highly politicized issue going into this decision. Yeah, so now the the HEROES Act, it does say in plain English that the Education Secretary of the United States in an emergency, in a national emergency, can waive or modify federal student loan programs. So wishy-washy language around that word programs, and that's what these justices are fighting about. And as far as judicial restraint, you might have uh, justices perhaps on both sides of the aisles. And in fact, uh, some of the conservative justices during the questioning, uh, during oral arguments, had said, well, you know, the language says that the education secretary has this power. So uh, perhaps not restraining uh, themselves properly and reading the letter of the, the text But uh, this was definitely one that was a difficult decision. Arguments were solid on both sides, uh, but the education secretary here not being able to go it alone, the administration not being able to go it alone, it looks like if uh, there there, uh, needs to be debt relief here for student loans, it's going to have to come from congressional action. So Alexis, what happens next then? If you're someone, you have federal loans and you've watched this ruling, what happens as of today? 
Yeah, so you know that the administration has uh, decided that the repayment for those who, let's say, would not have been eligible, but now that turned out to be everybody, it goes back into repayment in September. Uh, so those payments are going to have to be made or other arrangements to apply for other forgiveness plans. But this particular debt relief, and there has been other debt relief that the administration has rolled out, but this debt relief, is off the table. So we're looking at that $20,000 uh, $20, up to $20,000 per eligible borrower. Uh, but things are going to change. And there has been so much talk about the potential impact on inflation that this could compound problems here in the United States with prices being so high that now these borrowers are going to have to go deeper into their pockets and grab some money for student loans. And they've had this reprieve for over two years now. I appreciate that update there. The Supreme Court striking down that student debt forgiveness from the Biden administration. A big thank you there to our Alexis Keenan.